welcome to the Cinnabar. If you follow this channel regularly, you may recall in, in some of the past episodes, I've talked about a project I've been working on reloading some Henry 44 rimfire cartridges. And we've got some reloaded now. We, we cast some of our own bullets and, and um, broke down some, some old original cartridges, uh, reprimed them, reloaded them. And so we needed a test fire rifle to test them out. And so one of my, our viewers, who's been a, a real big supporter of the channel, sent me this Winchester 1866 carbine as a, for test firing. Now, this one doesn't have a lot of collector value left because at one point in its life, it was in really, really bad shape and had been rusted real badly and, and then cleaned up again, reblued. Um, and really was was a wall hanger and of course we didn't realize how bad until we got into it that, that this uh, old carbine had been treated and you know it had broken parts it had bent parts it had missing parts um, strip screws all over the place been converted to center fire which didn't help much so we had to convert it back to rim fire and so we got everything done and it took quite a little while and and uh, so we took it out to, to test fire a couple of our, our Henry reloads and then we found we had a couple more problems. Now, the, it had a, a kind of a weak homemade mainspring. So the only way we could get it to fire is to actually pull the, the hammer back past full cock, pull the trigger, and then we'd get enough um, energy that we could get it to fire. Now we've replaced it with another mainspring and, and actually that mainspring was, was too powerful. We couldn't hardly work the action. So um, keep, keep an eye out. We'll show a vis video of how to properly lighten a, a mainspring. The other problem we had, and, and we'll, we'll show you the clip now of, of our test fire. Now you may have noticed when we test fired that cartridge, we got a little puff of smoke right out of the top of the receiver. And so when we ejected the cartridge, we kind of found the culprit here. So this is what I found when I ejected this cartridge. You can see it just got a split right down it. Now we knew that this gun had a little bit of extra head space and that's really common with the older Winchester toggle link guns. Uh, and it shouldn't really have been a problem because these 44 Henrys are a straight walled cartridge. So even if, we, if that case backed up a little bit, uh, it shouldn't have created space in there for, for this uh, cartridge to expand and split like it did. If it was a, a tapered or neck cartridge, then we could see problems arising from that. So let's, let's mic this case and just kind of see where it's at. And we see that it's, you know, between 475 and 480, depending on where we mic it, um, which is was quite a bit too big. Now here's, here's an original Henry case we can mic it, and it comes up at 443, 444, 444, 443, so pretty consistent right in that area. Here's one that I reloaded and sized using the CH4D 44 Henry die, and we're at 442, 442, 442. So we've got about 30 thousandths um, extra diameter on this casing where it's, it's bulged, this, bulged this casing out. So it, it appears that we've got a really loose chamber in there and, and probably what's happened is, is it had a lot of rust in that chamber at some time and it got cleaned up and probably whoever did it never intended to fire it again. But we need to confirm that before we go any further. So we're going to go ahead and do a a uh, chamber cast and show you kind of our process on how we do that. Now the first thing we're going to need is an alloy or a medium to make our casting. Now most commonly used is a product called Cerosafe which is an alloy that melts at an extremely low temperature around 175 degrees. Um, I've got something very similar here from a company called Roto Metals um, that, that we're going to use today. Now I, I have seen people use sulfur which makes a beautiful smooth bright yellow casting but it's really nasty stinky stuff so I just prefer not to use it so we're gonna we're gonna cut off a little chunk of this um, this material here get it heated up and show you how we make our casting now before we make our chamber cast we're gonna run just a, a lightly oiled patch through just if we've got a light coat of, of oil in the chamber area then it may kind of help to get that 
casting out of there when we get done. And now we've got our plug. Now in this case I've just taken a, a piece of blue shop towel and that's going to be the front edge of the, the plug for our chamber cast. And So you notice there's a piece of tape on my rod here. We've, we've already kind of measured it out ahead of time but as we take a cartridge here and hold it up above the barrel where it's going to sit in the chamber we want to get that plug out in front of that cartridge just a little ways and in this case kind of right about the back end of this rear sight here and we want to get out far enough that we get through the uh, freebore area and into the lands and grooves a little bit we can see what kind of throat erosion there is and, and that kind of thing so we'll just put this plug in the in the bore and run it up to where we've got our our tape on the cleaning rod and there we go ready for the next step okay so we're putting a little heat into this chamber getting it kind of preheated for those of you who are bullet casters you know that we don't drop good bullets until we've heated up our mold we're not going to get this super hot because uh, our alloy isn't going to get that hot and it'll probably fold over a little bit, but we'll, we'll make a good enough mold we can get some measurements. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and heat up this ladle some, just get it kind of preheated. Now we took the, the forend off just so we wouldn't cause any damage to the finish on the forend. And of course if you're using a uh, torch to preheat your chamber, you definitely don't want to get it near the forend. Alright, here we go, we'll turn up this torch a little bit and get things heated up. And then we'll get our casting alloy in here. It doesn't take much with the... We've got more than enough of this casting alloy, so we'll get it melted good. And there it starts to go. If we won't dribble it too much out the side. And we did. That's alright. We lost a little bit of it. But we... Okay, so we're ready to go now. We'll heat up the spout a little bit and pour our casting. There we go. Now we'll let it cool off and come back here shortly. Now here's what the top of this chamber cast looks like while it's still in the chamber. We overfilled it just a little bit because it does tend to shrink just a, a smidge as it's cooling off. Now let's get it out of there and see how we did. Alright, so here's our chamber cast coming out now. We'll dig it out of there and have a look at it. Okay, so we got a real nice chamber cast here. And you can see I put, put a little mark there right at the front of where the cartridge case would be. And because this is a 44 Henry and a straight walled cartridge with a healed base bullet, we wouldn't expect to see any tapering through this chamber area clear out into the, the rifling. And we see there's some start of some rifling out here, although it's, it's fairly weak. But we can see and I don't know if you can see it as well, but with the naked eye, I can see it pretty clearly that there is some tapering from the from the far end up here. And I know this is upside down for you guys, but um, we're at 474. We would expect to be in the 440 range. Um, here we are, 472. As we go on down, 472 again, or 468, excuse me. And then as we get through the ogive portion, then, or the free bore in the, in the barrel, we're at 455, and then where we would expect to be about 444, which, which coincides perfectly with the outside diameter of this original Henry cartridge. So we've confirmed our suspicions that this particular uh, chamber is way oversized. And, and one of the things we can see, and, and I hope you can see it as well, is that we've got a lot of vertical lines going around. 
which means most likely this chamber was really rough at some time and somebody took a, a pretty rough um, abrasive and cleaned it out and, and kind of opened that whole chamber up. So thanks to this excellent chamber cast, we now know for certain that this barrel is unserviceable or unshootable. So the customer's got some decisions to make about where to go forward from here. Now, because this one has a, a poor chamber, uh, the rifling is, is pretty marginal and the outside of this barrel has been heavily, heavily polished, it really um, limits our options. I mean, it really means a, a replacement barrel. And since, you know, a, a used barrel for a 66 in, in serviceable condition is pretty hard to come by, it, it most likely means to have a barrel made. So I hope you learned something today. If, if you do find yourself in need of uh, casting your chamber, don't be intimidated by it. It doesn't take a lot of fancy equipment or tools. Um, it's really a fairly simple process and, and you can learn a lot from it. So thanks for joining us today. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.